Is a scroll saw safe? And how do I use one? Hi, it's Caitlin, and in today's video, I'll be answering those questions. In my last video, I did a comparison on a tabletop scroll saw to my DeWalt scroll saw. Today, we'll be going a little deeper and we'll be talking about how to use a scroll saw and what you need to get started. To answer the question, is a scroll saw safe? The answer is, when used properly with the proper PPE, a scroll saw is safe and very easy to use. A scroll saw is often a tool that beginners or even kids have been known to use. So let's first discuss what you need to get started. Now that you've decided on which scroll saw that you wanted to buy, it's time to first think about your PPE. That's your personal protective equipment. Those things would include hearing protection, a respirator. With scroll sawing, there's a lot of dust involved. So you definitely don't want to be breathing that dust in. So a respirator is a great idea. You may want to consider eyeglasses and possibly a work apron. I like to keep the dust off my clothes, so a work apron is a great idea. If you have not seen my video on this work apron, I will leave a link in the description below with links to everything else that I used in today's video. Now that you have your PPE, let's talk about blades. When choosing a blade, you want to choose a high quality blade and make sure if you're beginning that you get a variety pack. My number one blade choice would be a modified geometry blade. When I switched to these, the first things that I noticed was it gave me a lot cleaner, smoother cut. I also ended up doing a lot less sanding. To me, that was worth every penny by spending a little extra on my blades. Because of me and who I am, I always like to cheap out and buy the cheapest possible thing, but sometimes there are things in life that you have to spend money on, and that is your scroll saw blade. These modified geometry blades are put out by Pegasus and they have a printout chart which tells you which blade to use for what thickness wood that you're using and what size pilot hole that you can drill. To me that is very beneficial especially when I was first beginning. I didn't know what size blade to use for what thickness material that I was cutting with. Um, and sometimes I do still refer back to that chart. So I have it laminated and hung on my shop wall and that is a very nice thing to have. Now we are gonna load a blade into this DeWalt scroll saw. This DeWalt scroll saw does take a pinless blade. That means it's plain end, there is no pins on the end. One common question that I consistently see is which direction do I load my scroll saw blade? The answer to that is First of all, you want to load the blade with the teeth pointing towards you. And you always want the majority of teeth pointing downward. These modified geometry blades do have teeth going in both directions, but you want the majority of teeth to always point down. With my blade facing in the right direction, I'm gonna slide it through, loosen my thumb screws here at the bottom, slip the blade in, and just begin to tighten my thumb screw. Now that the bottom's tightened, we're gonna go ahead and push this head down and slide the blade into the top thumb screw and tighten. Now that your blade is in, it's time to talk about tension and speed. Right now, my lever is pushed all the way to the right and there is zero tension on my blade. So we're just going to move this lever to the left and begin to apply tension. With tensioning, you don't want to get stuck on a certain number because my tension is going to be different than your tension. Everybody is going to place their blade just a little bit different in the scroll saw, causing your number to be tensioned differently. Tension can also be somewhat of a personal preference. I personally like to scroll saw and find it much easier with a high tension. I like my blade to be nice and tight. If you have your tension too tight, you're definitely gonna find out because you're gonna start snapping blades. So what I do as I begin to tension is just give my blade a little test. And as you can hear, there is a high ring. It's kind of resisting pressure. And that's my sweet spot. So right now I'm about at a two and a half. And that's where I like to tension. Now let's talk about speed. This DeWalt scroll saw does go from one all the way to eight. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Right now I'm at an eight. 
then I'm gonna work my way down. Right now this is at a four, and I can go all the way down to a one. Your speed is going to be determined by what you're cutting, how dense of material you're cutting, and how thick of material that you're cutting. You need to start out with a speed that's comfortable for you. You don't wanna be scrolling too slow that you're driving your piece into the blade. You want to let your blade do the work for you. All you're doing is guiding and gently pushing your material as you cut. So if you're finding that you're really driving your blade, the problem is probably going to be that you're either going too slow or your blade is too dull. If you're cutting too fast and cutting a thicker, more dense material, you can cause your blade to overheat. So the moral of the story is your blade tension and your speed is going to be something that you determine and something that you learn as you go. You're gonna find out quickly if you have too much tension on your blade because your blades are gonna break. You're gonna find out if your tension is too low because your blade is gonna wanna drift. You're gonna find out if you're overheating your blade because you're cutting too fast or cutting too slow that you're driving your piece. Now that you have a good idea on how these components work, it's time to get started with cutting. I have a YouTube video out there on how to prep your projects for the scroll saw. So I have this leaf, but possibly if you've never cut anything before, you just want to start out simple. Start out with cutting straight lines and then move to shapes. And what you want to do before you even start cutting is determine which side of the line you're going to cut on. You always want to be consistent. You want to determine which side of the line are you going to cut on. Are you going to cut on the outside, cut on the inside, cut on the line. This is something that you want to determine before you even make your first cut. If you start out on the outside and then move to the inside, when you peel your pattern off, you're going to see inconsistencies and you don't want that. So before you even start, determine. To begin, you must first release all the tension off your blade. Loosen the thumb screw, lift up your head, and slide your piece on through the pilot hole. Push back down, tighten your thumb screw, and then put the tension back on your blade. As you begin to cut, you are going to use two hands. One hand is for holding your piece down, and the other will be for guiding your piece. Over time, this will become muscle memory and you won't have to think about what your hands are doing. When cutting, you don't want to drive your piece into the blade, but let the blade do the work for you. Remember to be as consistent as possible, but don't be too hard on yourself. It takes time and practice. You can make so many things with a scroll saw, and in my opinion, it's very enjoyable. Don't give up too quickly. You need to practice, practice, practice. When I first started out with scroll sawing, when I would make a little mistake, I would get so frustrated. I would take that piece and I would throw it in the trash. I wouldn't even peel off my pattern. I was so done and over it and I would give up and walk away. That was not the right answer. I realized that sometimes you would make a little mistake but when you peeled your pattern off, you wouldn't even notice. And I kind of wondered how many pieces I threw away that I actually could have kept. So don't get discouraged, don't be hard on yourself. It takes time and consistency. There's only one thing left to do and that's time to get started. Get your game face on, get practicing, get cutting. If you found value in this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest projects, tips, or to be inspired. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Stronger by Grace Designs. See you next time.